Welcome to another live on KEXP session here on uh, KEXP. Uh, these sessions are made available to you through YouTube. Uh, we also come to you live on the air with them. Uh, we couldn't do it without our listeners' support, though, so thank you very much. Uh, we are streaming 24-7 at KEXP.org. And right now, a session that I'm very excited about jumping into. I've been listening to this record non stop uh, part of the earshot jazz festival help me welcome uh, Micaiah McCraven
right now I'm supposed to keep it together because it's a live radio session but my god that was amazing what a journey Micaiah McRaven thank you very much uh, grab your mic there yeah. holy I just stunned at, at a uh, your playing your band's playing but also on the journey that those four songs sort of take you on um, just wow. The best thing about it, though, watching all the expressions on your faces, there's more interesting, funny looks on all of your faces. Do you see that live in your audience, too, when you're playing live? Yeah, I mean, when people are in it with us, you know, you get some stank face happening. Yeah, you do. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that sort of grimace. 
Uh, before we talk about the record, which I think is phenomenal, and I mentioned to you, to me, it has Grammy written all over it. Um, what you grew up? You kind of grew up in in music. You you were born in where? Paris. I was born in Paris. Yep. Okay, and then you moved to the states. When you were how old? One years old or so. Okay, so yeah. you don't. No memories of living in Paris, but definitely right. pictures. And um, my father moved back there at one point when I was a young man, and so had always like kind of visit and some relationship there. But you know. Yeah. Did you? So you moved to the East Coast when you guys when your family yeah, moved we, over? Yeah, we uh, we lived in uh, Western Massachusetts around okay. Northampton, Amherst, um, near the University of UMass. Yeah. Okay. Massachusetts. And now you live in Chicago, correct? I've been living in Chicago over 15 years now. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I love about what you do is it doesn't see, listening to it here in the studio, it sounds like a very traditional process that you go through to write these songs, but it's not for you, is it? I mean, uh, it's kind of all over the place. I mean, I really uh, trying to take from as many different techniques and places in terms of composition and, and learning how to compose in different varieties of settings. And I really just trying to take it all in and then put it together. Yeah, I mean, but you're a producer, too. So a lot of times you'll sample sort of a jam that you've had in the studio and sort of tighten it all up. Like most people wouldn't necessarily imagine your process throughout this whole thing. Well, you know, I think I'm kind of engaging with processes a lot of people have, have, have kind of used in different things. You know, I think bands coming together, uh, brainstorming together in a musical setting, jamming, improvising is often a way a band might approach uh, writing. Uh, right. But as a solo person, you might write on a page. But I might take a, um, a tune of mine that may be simple and we might rework it every time we, we do a tour okay every time we play it and so we could be talking it down but just leaving something open and then as we play the tunes it may evolve or when I record the tune then I might employ um, some like post-production yeah and I might rearrange it some more and you know continue kind of working on the pieces and so it's you know it evolves in a way that's amazing. Uh, you grew up in a musical family, too. You're, I mean, you were playing since you were a kid, right? Yeah, my, my dad's a drummer, and he put me on the drum set, you know, on his lap. From Your the dad's time. kind of a legendary drummer, too. Yeah, he's he? done. Yeah. Uh, Stephen McRaven worked with a lot of jazz greats, Archie Shep, Yusuf Latif, uh, Freddie Hubbard, Marion Brown. And, uh, and so I, I had the opportunity, you know, to, to kind of witness some of that, see rehearsals and action, see people working through tunes. Um, Leading bands, you know, uh, both my parents, um, who's my mother does it, does like Hungarian folk music, um, but they both had records of their own that they produced, self-produced, and and kind of blended their variety of um, influences, right. and like kind of crossed boundaries for the, and you know for their stuff, and so that's kind of really where I got. Kind of, you know, I was like, I wanted to make my own records, you know, and I wanted yeah. to make the music that I want to make with influenced by my colleagues and my friends and the people around me and uh, just kind of bring all of those things together uh, to be just music, you know. That's, I, I find that really interesting because I feel like a lot of artists get stuck in the, this is how you're supposed to do it. Did you ever get any flack from, from jazz greats that, hey, wait a minute. You're, you're coloring outside the lines. Um, never from jazz greats or, or, you know, but definitely, you know, there's plenty of discussion of like what is or isn't supposed to be when it comes to the music. Um, and often that stuff is conversations you have in the, in the, in the media or like in, right. when we're talking about how to sell the music or how do we talk about it or, right. or appropriation of the music. And, um, you know, but when it comes to like, just music and like my uh the opportunities i've had to be around the greats you know i think they've encouraged me nothing but to like keep on going find your sound you know be true to everything that came before you you know learn your stuff for real and and then and and, and keep it going and, and pass it on to the next people as well it's interesting your new album to me it almost seems like you have just as much in common with someone like DJ Shadow as you would Ginger Baker. Like uh, th those two things, like I hear elements of like experimental hip hop 
jazz. There's a lot going on stylistically. I mean, I, I, I can, couldn't quote this, but I wouldn't be surprised if DJ Shadow has sampled Ginger Baker, right? And so certain sounds that we've had historically that like we listen to on records or here and there, they all come back around. They're influencing all styles of music. I don't, I don't really think of it necessarily as so narrow. And if we think about like a radio station like this, it has broad taste in music, yeah. you know, and, and I really think that musicians kind of live in that space. Of course, there's people very, very uh, defined ideas of how they want things to sound or do things. Or, but, but ultimately, I think great musicians um, are open to lots of music and want to learn and, and absorb a lot of different things. And change and evolve. And just be. Right. Just be here and now. You know, in these times, you know, you know, I don't know if y'all got to try to evolve anything. Just, just, you know, be yourself. Just, yeah, don't hold back. Just, Do your thing. Yeah. Um, Makaya, go ahead and introduce your band because I was astounded by these players. Uh, I am every day and night. Um, these are uh, some brilliant musicians and, and dear friends of mine. Uh, that's the wonderful Junius Paul on the bass. Um, we've got the one and only Jeff. Parker on guitar, um, and on the far right, um, the birthday man himself, Deshaun Jones on uh, tenor saxophone, flute, and iwi. Happy birthday, Deshaun! What I gotta thank I, you. I gotta ask you: <laughs> How many different instruments were you playing in that session? You've got a sax, you got a flute, but I saw something else over there. Oh yeah, um, I was off uh, three, like three one three. What um, what is that one on the table there? This is Iwi. It's uh, made by Akai. It's the uh, Iwi 4000, and it's short for electronic wind instrument. So essentially, it's a um, synthesizer that's been modified for woodwind instrumentalists. So inside of this, it's not, I mean, it's MIDI capable, right. but it actually has like a bank of uh, maybe about 100 different sounds. Wow. Yeah. All use. wind instruments, though, for the most part. No, 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 all synthesizers. Oh. But it's been modified, like there's a pressure sensor on the mouthpiece for volume, and it's like, it's breath control, it's a wind controller. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, that sounded amazing. Uh, I want to talk about the record. In These Times, uh, it's been out for a couple of months? Month? Something yeah, about, like about a month. A about month a month. Change. It's been received really well here at KEXP. And I know that, like I said, I threw the Grammy thing out there. I just think this record is phenomenal. Talk about a journey. Uh, you go on a journey with this record. But these songs have been constructed over a seven-year period. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, the record has kind of been constructed over seven years, the last decade. I mean, uh, I've had some other records I did uh, in the moment, which uh, kind of that took a life of its own and took me me and my career on a journey through some different types of uh, production and, and techniques. And But all through this time, I had bits and pieces or tunes that I was working towards kind of a release like this. Okay. And, um, you know, whenever we play live and we toured uh, the record in the moment and we toured uh, highly, some off of highly rare and universal beings, but, you know, I've always been playing some of the music that I've been writing in more of a traditional sense. And, uh, and it just kind of took some time over time. And other projects came in and then I was asked to do some pretty cool projects that kind of took a front seat. And so as all that happened, um, it just kind of got to a point where we eventually we did some large ensemble performances with the strings and, 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 yes. and the record just evolved into kind of the piece that it is. Was it hard to sort of compile all those emotions and all that energy from that many years? Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to cut a lot of stuff right. if you're working <laughs> on something for that long. So, you know, not everything makes it on the record. And, right. you know, things that you 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 thought were like a for sure or you loved. But then in the process, it, it uh, you know, I really try to let the record tell me, you know, what what's going to how it's going to fit all together. So sometimes, you know, there's some disappointment there even. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, man, I, I just think it would be hard to sort of, you know, put all of that energy and uh, how do you, you know, how do you kill certain songs? How do you dump certain tracks from, you know, your journey? Yeah, I think, I mean, some of the hardest stuff, um, you know, in, in creating a record or a piece of art um, is finishing. 
You know, it, it, I know it sounds, so, it sounds simple. <laughs> Hence the quote at know? the beginning of the album. <laughs> yeah, but, but it, it sounds simple, you know, but, you know, um, you know, whether you're, you're working on your PhD or, or anything, you know, often that last step is, 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 the, hard, is the hardest one. And, and, and I find like for me making a record or finishing a tune, it's, it's really the moment of, of, of making the decision that it's, that it's finished and, and finding the peace in that and, and letting that thing out. Uh, that you've created at the best of your ability, you know, letting that out, you know, warts and all, because this is the most I have to you offer. You gotta do this it. This is the most I have to offer, and I, and you know, at one point you just gotta, you say this is this is what I have, and you know, they say uh, practice makes progress, not perfect. Okay, all right. Well, this album is to me I, I, as close to perfection as you could get. Just the emotions I go through with this record. So uh, I wish you the best, man. Thank you so much. With this album. Thank you all for coming into the studio today and performing live on the air. KEXP sessions are funded by you, our listeners. And if at any time you feel like you'd like to make a donation, any amount is fantastic. Go to KEXP slash give to make a donation. And uh, this has been Micaiah McCraven. New album is called In These Times. It's live on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.